in the last lecture we had looked at floor planning and we have also looked at an expression or a way to represent the floor plan in terms of slicing tree today we will look at a more compact representation of the floor plan which is called a polish expression and how it can be used along with simulated handling optimization technique to optimize floor plans so what is a polish expression now wong and liu presented a method called polish expression to represent slicing floor plans a polish expression is nothing but a precise representation a concise representation of the floor plan which the computer can handle which a uh, computer can manipulate uh, and uh, improve the floor plan <coughs> so it is uh, just a rough um representation of the floor plan the relative positions of the blocks and a polish expression can be obtained by a post order traversal of a slicing tree if you remember in the last class we had classified floor plans broadly as slicing and non slicing floor plans and we had said that any slicing floor plan can be represented by a slicing tree and if you do a post order traversal of a slicing tree we get a polish expression containing n operands and n minus 1 operators for n blocks you know even in a slicing tree we had uh, n minus 1 horizontal and vertical operators and we had you know n the blocks so that is going to be translated as a polish expression having n operands the blocks we call it operands and the cuts the horizontal and the vertical cuts we call it the operators <coughs> Now what is a post order traversal of a slicing tree it is just traversing through the tree by visiting the left subtree first the right subtree next and the node itself i will illustrate that <coughs> if you remember in the last lecture we had looked at um, a slicing floor plan like this we had followed a convention like this when it's a horizontal cut you place what is on the bottom at the left and what is on the top on the right and so we have got this as the slicing tree for this slicing floor plan now as i said we have to do a post order traversal of this slicing tree now i suggest that when you do that you always start from the bottom here and from the leftmost node because in a post order traversal as i said in the last slide it is the left sub tree the right sub tree and then the node itself see you have left right and then the node itself you have to just follow this so i start with this so 6 7 v that is the order left right and the node itself then i have another sub tree here so left right and the node itself so 4 5 v and then this becomes the left right and then the node itself so what becomes is you know 67v then 45v and then 67v 45v h you understand what i'm saying 67v 45v h right now this entire thing is left so left then 3 and h right and then we have a sub tree here so it is 2 1 h then this entire 2 1 h that is left the entire one on the right and then the node itself so this is the post order traversal of a slicing tree so you start the 67v 45v then you put them all together that is this entire sub tree then that entire sub tree and then 3 and then h and then you have got 2 1 h here and then this is left this entire thing is right and then the node will still that is v. i hope you understand that just needs little more practice to draw the uh, to get the polish expression uh, from the slicing tree <coughs> now why are we doing this there is something which is unique about this the post order traversal of a tree is unique that is you can verify that from uh, the basics of algorithms and so when we do a post order traversal of a slicing tree we get a polish expression now because there is only one way of performing post order traversal of a binary tree there is there can be only one polish expression 
corresponding to a slicing tree. That is very important to understand. So, given a slicing tree, there can be only one polish expression which corresponds to that. In other words, the post order traversal of a slicing tree is unique. I have just illustrated the same that we have a one to one correspondence between the polish expression and a slicing tree. But there is a problem here in the sense for a slicing fl floor plan we can have many slicing trees possible. Now that should not be surprising because I said in the last class that you can just start with any cut as long as the cut goes through the entire floor plan. So you can, may start with a horizontal cut or a vertical cut. But there can be floor plans where there are multiple vertical cuts possible even to start with. So a person who chooses one cut and a person chooses another vertical cut may end up having different slicing trees. I'll illustrate that. So it is possible to have multiple slicing trees for representing the same floor plan. But of course we know that for a single slicing tree there is only a single polish expression. There can A slicing tree can be uniquely represented by a polish expression. But because the floor plan has multiple slicing trees we end up having multiple polish expressions representing the same floor plan. I hope I have made it clear. So this is a complicated problem because we want a concise representation of the floor plan so that we can optimize it. But in this case, you know, for floor plans having multiple slicing trees, we end up having multiple polish expression all representing the same floor plan. <coughs> I hope this example will make what make it clear. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have these three slicing trees, you can verify them later, representing the same floor plan. And uh, for every slicing tree, you have a corresponding polish expression. Now, this is a problem because we are going to have many representations for the same floor plan. Now, why is this a problem? because we are going to use this representation of the floor plan, namely the polish expression in an iterative improvement optimization technique called simulated annealing. Now simulated annealing needs some introduction. I have talked about it in my previous lecture. You can go through it. It is a general optimization technique. Now if you are going to use the polish expression to represent the floor plan, we are going to have these two problems the search space, that is the solution space, that is the space in which you search for the optimum solution will be enlarged because of several duplicate solutions. And the second problem is the number of polish expressions corresponding to a given slicing floor plan can vary from structure to structure. In fact, I had I can illustrate to you with another example if time permits that for certain slicing floor plan you may have say five slicing trees possible and for certain slicing floor plan may have just two slicing trees possible. So this will bias the search towards floor plans with many alternative slicing trees. So we will not be able to perform a good search for the global minima if we have many polish expressions representing the same floor plan. So the researchers who presented this algorithm Wong and Liu have come up with what is called as a normalized polish expression. Now, a normalized polish expression is an expression which doesn't have any consecutive horizontal operator or vertical operator. Now, <coughs> to illustrate that further, we have a slicing floor plan here. We have drawn two slicing trees. Now, you can see that for the slicing tree on the right, you have what is called as a polish expression here which has got two consecutive horizontal operators. Okay, So this is a unnormalized polish expression whereas here you have a normalized polish expression because this expression doesn't have any consecutive horizontal or vertical operator. So in terms of the slicing tree they call it a skewed slicing tree and a non-skewed slicing tree. 
A skewed slicing tree is a slicing tree in which no node and its right sen are the same. You can see that no node and its right sen are the same. Now if you have a skewed slicing tree, you will get what is called as a normalized polish expression. And if you have a unskewed or non-skewed slicing tree, you know, where you have a node and its right sen being the same, obviously when you do a post order traversal, you will get uh, a normalized polish expression. So, what we are saying is that the redundancy in the representation of the floor plan can be eliminated by using this normalized polish expression. And interestingly, there is a one to one correspondence between the set of skewed slicing trees and the set of normalized polish expression. There is also a one to one correspondence between the set of normalized polish expressions and the set of slicing floor plans. So, we can say that a normalized polish expression uniquely represents a floor plan and the researchers Wong and Liu suggest methods, they've suggested moves uh, to easily perturb the slicing floor plan by just make applying some small changes to this normalized polish expression. We'll see an example. Now this is important because we want to use this normalized polish expression in a simulated handling optimization technique and in that technique it is important that we we are in a position to quickly evaluate the cost of the floor plan you know in terms of its um, area and the wire length and the normalized expression normalized polish expression enables us to do that because in a simulated running technique we'll be trying out various um, solutions at random we'll be um, going through various neighboring neighbors uh, exploring the solutions at random so it is important that we uh, we are in a position to we are able to evaluate the cost um, that is the quality of the floor plan quickly and um, and the if if that is so then we can explore more solutions <coughs> so the researchers who presented this algorithm have suggested three moves now some naming conventions this is a normalized polish expression we have got 1 6 3 and 5 as the operands and h v are the operators and uh, they have suggested these three moves the first move is you can just swap two adjacent operands. So you can swap 1 and 6 or 3 and 5. Remember 6 and 3 are also adjacent operands because they are just having an operator in between. So we talk in terms of operands. So 6 and 3 can also be swapped. You can just swap their locations in the polish expression and you will find that it uh, reflects as a change in the position of the blocks in the floor plan. I will show you an interesting animation for that. Similarly, the second move is complementing some chain. By chain, we mean a chain of operators. So, you know, H is just a chain with one operator. Here you have HV, you have a chain with two operators. Okay, you can just complement. So, H can be made V or V can be made H. When you have to complement HV, HV can become VH. So, that is the second move they have suggested. And the third move they have suggested is swapping an adjacent operand and an operator. <coughs> So, that is for example 5 and V here, they can be swapped. So, it becomes 1, 6, H, 3, V, 5 instead of 5 V. So, you can swap adjacent operand and an operator. <coughs> and you must be careful that this third move, now assuming we start with the normalized polish expression, when you apply move M1, the after the move also the expression remains normalized. When you apply M2, after the move also the expression remains normalized. But you have to be careful with the third move because when you apply the third move, there is a possibility that the expression becomes unnormalized. So it's important that when you apply the third move, you always check after applying the move if the expression has become unnormalized. <coughs> now I've already given you um, inputs on the simulated handling as an optimization technique. Um, it is there in my previous lecture. Uh, to uh, explain it briefly, to just give a brief introduction, you know that uh, uh, simulated running is a general optimization technique applied to problems where the search space is large. So you have to search through um, a large search space 
and an exhaustive enumeration is impractical if not impossible so in those cases simulate and unlink comes to our rescue because it goes by a random search <coughs> and uh, I don't have time to explain it fully but this is the way it is you know this is the main simulate running algorithm and we initialize some temperature some initial solution and some cooling rate alpha and then we with those initial solution at that temperature and uh, m is the time you spend at um, a particular temperature you call this function and we explore a neighbor to the present um, solution and then you ex see if the cost has reduced for example in our case the cost will be the area of the floor plan and the wire length if the cost is reduced you just accept it right so delta h is the change in cost if the cost is reduced you accept it now this part I'll come to a little later um, and if the cost is not reduced you can reject it but if the cost is not reduced you don't reject all inferior solutions you accept them with some probability so here random generates a random number between 0 and 1 so uh, that that induces some probability into this criteria so what we're essentially saying is if delta h is lesser than 0 the cost is reduced accepted if the cost is not reduced you accept it with some probability right and this acceptance probability reduces as time elapses that means as you keep moving as the temperature comes down the probability of acceptance reduces that means we are going to have less uphill moves okay so that is simulated handling in brief now I'm saying all this because Wang and Liu applied uh, this to floor planning and what they have done is they've taken the initial solution as a polish expression and they have explored the neighboring solution by applying the three moves which I just discussed so that is one way you can perturb the solution perturb the floor plan uh, by using those three moves and so from the initial solution you can uh, initialize some temperature and some cooling rate and some M which denotes the time you spend at each temperature and then you come here explore the three moves and uh, then see if the cost is reduced to accept it um, based on the probability and then you come back and so uh, you will realize that if you apply this for some time you will be able to get an optimized solution so here I'm just going to in the next slide I'm just going to show you some animations <coughs> which will make this interesting now in this we have a normalized polish expression and here we have the corresponding slicing tree right and here we have the corresponding floor plan right now if you are if you want to just check you can see that 2 phi v so 2 phi v and then you have <coughs> this whole thing being the left left and then right one and then h uh, you have 7 4 V and then you have 3 7 4 V H right so that is how you that is the correspondence between the polish expression and slicing tree. so given a slicing tree you can get a unique polish expression or given a polish expression you can get a unique slicing tree and from the slicing tree you can get the slicing floor plan you can verify that here I have a vertical cut and 2 and 5 are a cut vertically and 2 is on the left 5 is on the right you have 2 is on the left 5 is on the right and a vertical cut and um, this is a horizontal cut so I use the same convention again what is on the left is the bottom um, okay here this example is from another book uh, practical problems in VLS physical design by Swing Lim. so he has used another convention so what is on the left is he has used to the top and what is on the right is the bottom just a <coughs> excuse me just a minor change in the convention but it's um, the same so in the next few animations what I'm going to do I'm going to show an example for each move so we start with this as the first polish expression we're going to apply one move m1 and uh, um, then we're going to get a polish expression we're going to show how see you're going to see how the slicing tree changes and how the polish expression changes so here we have it the first move So here we are going to have the first move which is swapping two adjacent operands. So we're going to swap operands three and seven. You see how the slicing tree changes. 
and correspondingly how the slicing floor plan changes and how the area changes that is the first move let me just show it again I think it was pretty fast so here I have the polished expression here and I'm going to swap these two operands and when these two operands are swapped you just observe how the slicing tree changes and the slicing floor plan changes well I think that has illustrated the first move let us with, with the resulting polish expression let's see an example for the second move which is I'm sorry. 